Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio. So today, we're going to be having a little bit of a look at a brand new tool which can really help out your Ultra Beast. Because if there's one thing that Ultra Beasts need right now, it's more help and more support. It is coming out in Full Metal Wall, and it has been revealed and translated by the lovely David Hockman over at Rappelman TCG. So what does it actually do? Well, according to David, it's called Beastbringer, and if you have six prize cards, and the Ultra Beast this card is attached to, knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon EX or GX, by damage from an attack, you take one additional prize card now it's an early game thing it's only when you've got six prizes remaining but ladies and gentlemen this is a rather redonkulously good card which can really really help you here in the early game and as i'm thinking this through honestly my first thought here my first reaction is blacephalon you see, one of the things about Ultra Beast decks at the moment is they all love B-String. And B-String lets you search your deck for two extra energy and attach them to one of your Ultra Beasts, but only when your opponent has got three or four prize cards remaining. Which means it's not going to be that early on in the game, which could be potentially a little bit awkward. Now, to be clear, this is if you have six prize cards remaining. So if your opponent goes up by two or three prize cards, you can use Beast Bringer on your first KO to take an extra prize. And that will combo with Beast String. You can combo this with Beast String. But most of the time, you're going to want to kind of jump ahead with this. So if we have a look at Blacephalon... It does 50 damage for each fire energy that you lost zone attached to all of your Pokemon. Now, generally speaking, you play it with Naganadal. Naganadal accelerates a whole bunch of energy, and then Blacephalon lost zones all that energy, and you get to, well, take a big prize. But if you are able to pop Beastbringer on here, then you can actually take an extra prize. And if you do this in the early game against a tag team GX, and Celebi and Venusaur has seen quite a lot of play and quite a lot of success in Japan, then all of a sudden, you're taking four prizes from your first attack. That's a little bit dumb. As soon as you've taken a prize, this becomes a completely worthless card. This does nothing as soon as you've taken a prize. That's strictly not entirely true. Something like the new Tool Drop Dublade does extra damage for each Pokemon tool you've got in play. So I suppose it will add damage for Dubblade. It will allow Dubblade to do an extra 30 damage. But generally speaking, as soon as you take a prize, this becomes, yeah, frankly pointless. But that doesn't really matter. This is an early game tool. And I think Blacephalon's rather nice. Now you could, of course, use it with something like Buzzwall. Buzzwall's got Jet Punch, 30 to the active, 30 to the bench. But if you KO Ways or Rua here... That is not going to work because you only get the extra prize if you KO a GX or an EX Pokemon. Now, the other thing that Ultra Beasts have is Beast Energy. Beast Energy lets you do an extra 30 damage to the active. And Boswell does have Diancy Prism Star, which lets you do an extra 20 to the active. And let's not forget about Choice Band. So actually here, if you're up against a Zoroark GX, if you can find both your once per deck Beast Energy and your once per deck Prism Star, your Diancy, bearing in mind Lizio will help you search for both of them, plus a Choice Band, you're doing 30 base, 30 for the Beast Energy, 30 for the Choice Band, 20 for Diancy Prism Star, that is 110, which will get a KO on a Zoroark, and you're taking an extra prize. No, you're not because of Choice Band. And this is one of the points I want to make about this card. It is a super awkward card. It's only when you knock out the active. So if you knock out a bench with Jet Punt, that's not going to do it. It is only an EX or a GX. So if you knock out a non-GX, you're not going to do it. And it is a 
tool, so you're taking away damage that you would be able to have from Choice Band. So you're essentially desperately trying to take out an EX or a GX, but you're not able to play Choice Band. And Shrine of Punishment takes the KO between turns, so that's not going to work. And that makes it a super awkward tool to use. Having said that, it lets you take an extra prize. The last time we saw this on an item card was Missing Clover, where it was an item card where you had to play all four of them at once to take a prize. That's not exactly the most reliable way to play the Pokemon trading card game. So yeah, this is a super awkward tool that isn't always going to work. But you know what? It's kind of supposed to be that way. Because otherwise it would be too gosh darn good. So if you're playing Boswell, you need to spread a bit of damage in the early game and then come in and finish off. If you are playing an Ultra Beast, which you have to be for this, and your opponent goes down to three or four prizes before you've taken a prize, then this becomes really good. Because you can kind of go nuts with B-String and then attach this and then go nicely. If you're using Blacephalon, you can set up a big KO early game, but it really does depend on what you're playing. Blacephalon is quite likely to take a big KO early in the game, whereas Boswell is more likely to start whistling Pokemon down in the early game, waiting for a chance to use B-String. Maybe if you head over into the expanded format, where it still has Max Elixir, and you can have much more explosive early turns, yes, this could be really nice. But as it stands at the moment, Blacephalon really does stand out to me as the best use for this. But I do kind of like Naganadal. Now, Naganadal's stack attacker saw a little bit of hype and a little bit of success, and people were loving it, and then it disappeared off the face of the earth. Stack attacker reduces damage done to your Ultra Beast by 10. And then you've got Naganadal, which has got 210 HP. But for a single energy, you do 20 damage for each of your Ultra Beasts in play. To be fair, if we ever got an Ultra Beast that had a draw engine, this would become way better, but we don't. And you have to stop playing stuff like Tapu Lele and Orangaroo, because they take 20 damage off of your side of the field, which is kind of annoying. But 120 damage here means you can KO something like a Buzzwall, because of the weakness. The problem is, what you really want to do is add a Beast Energy and a Choice Band to get a one-hit KO on something like a Blacephalon and a Rayquaza, but you cannot have a Choice Band attached because you've got to have a Beast Bringer attached. So once again, we're into awkward territory. The other thing is, we've got a whole bunch of non-GXs in terms of Ultra Beast, which are really good later on in the game. So you've got something like Zerkatry that does 100 damage as a Lightning Pokemon, and automatic paralysis if you've got three prizes remaining, at which point it's too late to use Beastbringer. We've got Nihiligo that could actually work here, although it's very, very, very nerve-wracking. So one Psychic Energy, if your opponent has exactly two prizes remaining, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it. It's literally Zoroark GX's GX attack, you just get to copy any attack from your opponent's side of the field. So what you can essentially do here is copy an attack that can KO an EX or a GX with Beast Bringer and potentially take an extra prize. If you can use this to take a KO on a Tag Team GX, then you could potentially here, and you can copy GX attacks with this because it doesn't say you can't, then you could maybe be taking four prizes in one turn. So your opponent's got two prizes remaining. Up comes Nihiligo with Beast Bringer. You take four prizes, and all of a sudden, you've both taken four prizes. You've both got two prizes remaining, and your opponent's got to try and take down a GX when you've got a Nihiligo in the active. Beast Bringer is an exceptionally difficult card to use. It is a real pain in the neck. But it gives you an extra prize. In Blacephalon, it seems amazing. In other Ultra Beast decks, you're kind of waiting for B-String. And then with Nihiligo, it's amazing, but it's kind of nerve-wracking because you've got to leave it to the last minute. And of course, we are left with the awkward situation here, whereby you want to play four of these so that you are likely to draw into it early when you need it. But as soon as you play one of these and take a prize, it's kind of useless. Maybe you attach one early game and your opponent field blows it so you need to go and grab another. But other than that, it's actually kind of annoying. And that's the big problem here. Because do you play many of these? 
Or do you just play one of these and hope to find it at the right time? And maybe you're playing Alolan Ninetales so you can find it at the right time. But maybe, maybe you're not. It's such an awkward card to use. You've got to find it at the right time. It's got to be against an EX or a GX. You've got to have six prizes remaining. There's so many reasons not to play this. But you get an extra prize. Which is about the best reason to play it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what I think about Beastbringer. I'm giving it four wassies just because the potential here is off the charts. But I would like to know what you think about it. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But please do remember the most important rule as always. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassie, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do just that and do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk transformers and keyforge and other games that take our fancy but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio